excited to be with you today because the Lord will be doing us good. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for all that Jesus paid for on the cross when he said it is finished. We thank you for how you have lavished your love upon us. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You kept helping us at different times. And this week, we know you help us the more. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a brief praise and worship, and it shall be glorious. Flow along with us in this service today.
Nothing you cannot do. Nothing you cannot change. Nothing you cannot turn around. You are able. Great and mighty God. I put my trust in you. You are able. Jesus here today. Can I get a shout? Yeah. 
Thank you very much for shipping with us today. We'll be discussing they shall proceed no further. They shall proceed no further. In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. God spoke to this servant of God that my people are not destroyed because they don't pray. My people are not destroyed because they don't fast. My people are not destroyed because they don't live holy life. But there are things they ought to know and they don't know. What you don't know is above you. What you don't know, you can't even ask for it. What you don't know that you need to reject, you can't reject it because you don't even know it. Knowledge is power. And that was why Apostle Paul wrote extensively enlightening people in the day in his days. Different areas where they were lacking. He kept educating them, fighting ignorance, making sure they know what they should know. For instance, to the Corinthian church, he rebuked them regarding immorality and that brethren were taking cases before unbelievers to judge in the law court. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 1 to 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 to 3, there are any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints, verse 2. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Verse 3. Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? So all he was doing was to take care of that aspect of ignorance in their life. To the church in Thessalonians, the Thessalonian church, he wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest ye sorrow at others who have no hope. What he was after is to fight ignorance. What he was after is that people should know what they ought to know. And then when he wrote to Timothy, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 1, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1, he said, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. You can't change it, but religious times will come. Prepare for it. Dangerous times will come. Difficult times will come. Hazardous times will come. It will happen in the last days. In that same Second Timothy 3, if you look at verses 8 and 9, and that is where the text is coming from. Second Timothy 3, verses 8 and 9. Now as Genesis and Jambres resisted Moses. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will proceed no further, for their fully will be manifest to all, and theirs also was. King James Version brings out verse this place in particular where I want us to pay attention to it. Now as Genesis and Jimbres withstood Moses, so do this also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. In other words, whatever they have done, enough is enough. They will proceed no further. I don't know the challenges your life has gone through, your families have gone through. I don't know how terrible it has been. One unique thing you must know today is that the sufferings of your life will proceed no further. The powers of darkness that frighten you will proceed no further. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 
from verse 4 to 6. Second Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 4 to 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. We have weapons, they are mighty, they are not carnal, they can pull down strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. People of God, there are forces of darkness, there are powers that will not want you to become who you want to be. There are satanic agents that will not want you to have testimony. But the good part is that they shall proceed no further. Years ago, a man of God whom I preached in this meeting walked up to me and said, Sir, I've gone to American Embassy three times, and all the three times I was refused. I was denied visa. I said, Why? What happened? He said, Few days before he is to appear for the interview, an old woman will appear to him in the dream. Always the same old woman that never met a woman in life, I mean in real life. And the woman will say, you think it's easy to go to America? Forget it. And when he wakes up, he will pray, he will fast. When he goes for the interview, exactly the words that satanic demonic presence or demonic agent spoke, the same thing will be told him, think it's easy to go to America. No, you are here by the night. And he said, it has happened three times. I said, all right. When is the next time you are to go? He said, next week. And that woman had just appeared a few days ago. It was then I got angry in my spirit. The Bible said, who is he that say it? And they come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. So I joined him in prayer and I told him, I said, listen to me. What you don't know is above you. The Bible says one person will chase a thousand, two such chase ten thousand. If you know that, then we have something to hold on to. We call on God in prayer and the power of God fell on him and allowed him. When he got up from the floor, a living being left him. He just knew that something has happened. He went, he called me from Lagos. He said, they are giving me two year multiple. I said, come and see me when you come. He came. I said, do you have any book you have written? He said, no. I said, when do you want to travel? In the next 30 days. I said, all right. Some of your sermons, can you put them together? Said, you must have one or two books. And how? I said, I'll tell you what to do. Go to my press. The manager assisted him. And that was how to the glory of God, today he's traveling over the place, imparting life with his books, with his materials. He started with just agreeing together in prayer. I believe that God wants me to agree with somebody in prayer today. And whatever the enemy said you will not get, is a lie of the devil. The Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. They are mighty. They can uproot anything out of your way. They can take away sickness. They can take away delay in having children. They can take away anything. And I want to agree with him in prayer because today, miracle must happen. Just before we go on, one sister and the husband came. He says, since we married, children haven't come. I've had miscarriages. I said there is big fibroid. And the last one, the baby was five months, and then the baby came down. So we prayed. As God will have it. She came back about a month later. I said, God has done it. And as we kept praying from time to time, he said, they are saying, because the fire brought this and because... I said, sister, whatever the Lord does shall be forever. If God gave you this pregnancy, God will stand by you, fibroid or no fibroid. 
So I don't want to hear fibroid again. And so we kept praying. As God, we have it. God fought for her. She carried to town, delivered the baby boy. And so demanded for the address and I went to the house. As I carried this boy, I said, what is his name? He said, hallelujah. I said, no, I mean his name. He said, the name is hallelujah. Ah, so I said, the fact that I'm hearing somebody's name. So I prayed for the boy, bless him, as the Lord led me. And I made a prayer. I said, Lord, by a miracle, perfect all that concerns this family. The lady, after getting strength enough and so on, they went to the hospital and they said she had no fibroid. Ah. So oh, the fibroid that made me not to have children before. That was known. Listen to me. The power in agreement. And the law will fight for us. As Alleluia was trying to sit down to crawl, she became pregnant again. Carried to Tamp, gay bad, twin boys. Ah. So you have three children within a year, just call it two years. How? As God we have it. We had convention 2019. The guest speaker said, those who have testimonies as a result of last year's convention, come and give your, I mean, come and dance to the altar. And I saw one woman carrying one baby there, holding one there. And so I remembered her. When our testimony was shared, the place went wild. Listen to me. I'm here today to agree with you that whatever is happening in your life, whatever challenges that you don't know what to do, today it will proceed no further. God cannot lie. God cannot fail. God said, whatever you lay your hands on shall prosper. Now, in verse 6 of that 2 Corinthians 10, where we are. He said, I'm being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. It means your own obedience must be fulfilled. What some people don't know. Doing three-day fasting and prayer, seven-day fasting and prayer, drinking water only, and you're excited and you're happy. But when you finish, you go commit immorality once a while. When you finish, you go do this or that once a while, you destroy all that you thought you have done. It's important to be consistent, to serve God in spirit and in truth. I'm going to pray for you right now. I don't know who you are. I don't know which country you are in right now. If there's any besetting sin in your life, you need to call on God because the prayer we're going to pray today must not bounce back. We must take delivery of all that Jesus paid for. Let us pray. I want you to cry to God and tell the Lord, let my obedience be fulfilled today. You said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are mighty. But that our obedience must be fulfilled before God can do what he should do for us. Go ahead and pray that God should cleanse you. God should purge you. God should sanctify your life. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, or you give him and you take it back once in a while, you are a backslider and you want to make peace with God, I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins, save my soul, deliver me, write my name in the book of life. As from today, I will serve you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to pray for everyone now and as we continue. Lord, I pray that the sins of your children will be washed by the blood of Jesus. And the enemy may not have anything with which to hinder us. Thank you, Father. Sanctify everyone, cleanse the hearts of your children, that the power of God might flow through them as we go into ministration now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like us to pray some few prayers. Every first Tuesday of the month, we have an anointing service. 
I will pray with people and call on God to answer them. And so we'll pray from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Many people, God has given you wonderful promises, fantastic statements that you got when you went on a retreat or through a servant of God or in your dream life or whatever. But somehow there have been resistance. We we'll join our faith together in prayer. And the prayer you pray is, O oh Lord, by a miracle, silence all my adversaries. Go ahead, pray that prayer. O oh Lord, by a miracle, silence all my adversaries. The opportunity God has opened to me must materialize physically. All my adversaries, be silenced right now. Be silence right now. In the name of Jesus. The second prayer I want us to pray is in Isaiah 41, 11 and 12. Isaiah 41. It said, Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. All those that strive with you all those that have gang up against you, may God fight on your behalf in the name of Jesus. May God fight on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Verse 12 said, You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. Just before you pray that, when I saw it from New Living Translation, the same Isaiah 41, 11 and 12. Isaiah 41, 11 and 12. It says, see, all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. May that be the portion of somebody listening to me today. That all your enemies, angry enemies, they will lie there, confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. I say, what? God, you want to kill? Are you not the one who says you have no joy in the dead of a sinner? Listen to me. There are those who have vowed to be your enemies. And not just your enemy, to be an agent. Those agents of darkness... May God fight on your behalf today. Whatever it takes, some of them say over their dead body, will you have testimony? Let God fight to any length and eliminate them. The Bible continues, it says, you will look in vain for those who try to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. Go ahead, begin to pray. Lord, all those who attack me, they will come to nothing. All the powers, all the forces of darkness, Although the gang up against us, gang up against our families, they will come to nothing. They will come to nothing. In the name of Jesus. Verse, I mean, number, last prayer I want us to pray is in Isaiah 49, 25 and, 24 and 25. Isaiah 49, verses 24 and 25. Shall the prayer be taken from the mighty? All the captives of the righteous be delivered. May thus say the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. Anybody who has ever contended with you, tried to frustrate you, tried to torment you, or torment your children or your spouse, let God arise. Let all his enemies be scattered. Go ahead, pray. Something must happen today. Enough is enough. God will show up and prove his power, prove his anointing, prove his almightiness in every area. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Now, I have good news. In Isaiah 26 and verse 3, Isaiah 26 and verse 3, he said, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. While I was praying for this meeting, he told me clearly, challenges are around news all over, on the internet, on social media, radio, TV, frightening things here and there. He said, you, he will keep you and I in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed. If we put our trust in God, it will make us have perfect peace. Not just peace, perfect peace. In Isaiah 26, where we are, and look at verse 20, Isaiah 26, verse 20. He said, come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. Listen, people of God, God's word says, before coronavirus came, before the news started coming around, he said, come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. There comes a time when God wants you to hide yourself. There comes a time when God wants you and I to isolate ourselves from what is going on and have time with him. Many families are rejoicing that their father is around with their mother, the family, and they are together for a week, not just a phone call and that and that, but they could see their father. Listen to me. God can allow you and your family to turn this, stay home, do this, avoid this, avoid that. God can use that to make your family bond better, to make you have deeper, make your tap root in Christ stronger and better. You can decide that my family during this period will read the Bible more, will pray more, and you yourself can decide to draw closer to God than you have ever done. Now for this week, the update for the week, I want to close with the update for the week. Update for the week is found in Psalm 1 to 1 from verse 1 to verse 8. Good news Bible. I was so blessed when the Lord was telling me this about this week, and I want you to key to it, to key into it. Psalm 121 from verse 1 to verse 8, Good News Bible. I look to the mountains, where will my help come from? My help will come from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let you fall. God will not let you fall. Your, pre your protector is always awake. He doesn't sleep. Your protector is always awake. The protector of Israel never dozes or sleeps. I'm excited that this is the God I serve. The protector of the Togia for you never dozes or sleeps. The Lord will guide you. He is by your side to protect you. The sun will not hurt you during the day, nor the moon during the night. The Lord will protect you from all danger. He will keep you safe. He will protect you as you come and go now and forever. God will protect you as you go and as you come in. Trials will come. Challenges will come. Whatever may come, remember this chapter of the Bible throughout this week. Meditate on it. Read it until it becomes part of you. Let it be part of you because we live at a time 
when many things are flying around, many things that can take away your peace, many things that can put fear in you. But if you understand that God's word shall not fail, God's word shall not come back to him void, that whatever he says, that's it. He's the same yesterday, he's the same today, the same tomorrow. His government, nobody can change. And so if he has said something, he's strong enough to keep to whatever he has said. So I'll run through it again in a minute or two. I look to the mountains, Psalm 121, 1 to 8. If you have not written it down, take note of it. Take it down, take note of it. Read it almost every day throughout this week until Tuesday next week when I'll come your way because something is happening in the spirit already. He said, I look to the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help will come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you fall. Your protector is always awake. That shook me to my bones. Always awake. When witches are striking, whatever, my protector is there. When some people say they belong to a secret court and they refuse to sleep, they're holding satanic night vigils to attack, to do whatever. Your protector is always awake. My friend, your life is not in the heart of your enemies. Your protector is always awake. The protector of Israel never dozes or sleeps. The Lord will guide you. He is by your side to protect you. We say, Pastor, what about when I'm in the vehicle? He is by your side to protect you. What about when I'm in the ship? When I'm in, he is by your side to protect you. He is by your side. He is always by your side to protect you. The sun will not hurt you during the day, nor the moon during the night. The Lord will protect you from all danger. He will keep you safe from coronavirus. He will protect us and our families. In the name of Jesus, he will protect you as you go and go now and forever. I would like to pray. If you have handkerchief, you want me to bless. Like I said, every first Tuesday, those who have oil and they want me to pray, I pray on it. Because I saw that the disciples of Jesus anointed with oil. James was one of them. And when he was writing in James 5 and verse 14, he said, those who are sick, when the elders are praying, they should anoint with oil. In Acts 19, I saw the handkerchief from Paul heal the sick, meaning that we can pray on handkerchief and we can use it by faith as point of contact, as faith is tender and people can be healed and delivered anywhere. So if you have any, and you want me to pray on it, I will pray. Let us pray. Lord, I pray for those who believe that there is power in agreement. I pray for those who believe that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows. I ask that whatever they are holding, whether it's photograph of members of their family, whether it is oil, whether it is handkerchief, whether it is their certificates of incorporation that could not enhance the quality of their lives, whatever it is that is bothering them, whatever prayer requests they have, and they're lifting it up to you now, please God, merciful God, stretch forth your power Stretch for your anointing and deliver everyone in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in your life. I speak peace in your marriage. I speak peace in your home. I speak peace upon your spouse. I speak peace upon your children. I command your businesses will pick up again. Every one of us, whatever satanic power flying around will never reach us. For we are covered with the blood of Jesus. The Lord has given us update for the week. That he will not leave us. He won't forsake us. He does not doze. He does not sleep. 
is there to protect us at all times. From this day forward, I pronounce each and every one of us blessed. We are blessed when we go out. We are blessed when we come in. We are blessed in the night. We are blessed in the day. We are blessed when people are crying and saying there are evil here and there. We shall say that's a lifting up. Oh Lord our God, we are exempted from whatever the chaos that are happening around. We silence it with the power in the blood of Jesus. Protect and preserve your children in Jesus' name. So I decree that this oil is blessed. The handkerchief in your hand is blessed. Whatever you're holding is blessed. Go use it that the Holy Spirit leads you and let there be positive result. You will share testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, as the Spirit leads you, some people, the Lord may lead you to use it to wipe your face. Some people, the Lord may use you to lay it on the sick and they will recover. Some people, the Lord may lead you to use your handkerchief on whatever business you sell, whatever you do and pray. The Lord may lead you to anoint your house with your oil, to pray for the sick and anoint them. Just be led by the Holy Spirit. One thing I guarantee is that this thing works. I've seen it work, and it's working, and it's going to work. Praise the Lord. Now, I'd like to make a few announcements. Next week, by the grace of God, same time, same link, follows a more powerful visitation from the Lord. Is going to be first class. Inform all your friends and family members to join us next week, same time. I want you to get ready. God is doing something. Whatever is happening out there is not your portion. In the midst of trials, in the midst of challenges, God is still the same. Now, on Sunday, 10 a.m., to 11 a.m., 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., we'll have an exciting time with the Lord. Follow the same link. That of Tuesday is 11 a.m. to 12 noon. That of Sunday is 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Now, I want to passionately appeal to every one of us to obey the government rules. Whatever we are asked to do, let's do it. And we are asked to sanitize our hands, it's for our good. You are asked to wash your hands with soap, and even when you reach home you should do it, it's for our good. Each of us should obey whatever we are told to do. Stay clean. We have been told to maintain social distancing. Let's obey as much as possible. All these are for our good. May we try at a time like this not to be against the rules we are given by our different governments in our different countries, wherever we are. The Lord will show up for us in the name of Jesus. I would like to bless your offering today. I want you to get an offering to give to the Lord. One unique thing you will notice is that God does not owe any man. Whatever you give to God, he has a way of multiplying back to you. And I tell people, if God has truly been good to you, not just give and it shall be given the good measure, press down running, over as the Bible tells us, but the fact that God has been good to you, you sleep and wake up, you move around, and you are enjoying the faithfulness of God, when it's time for offering, give him cheerfully as the Lord blesses you. So I would like to pray. If you're writing a check, write it. God will do it ministries. The candidates are on the screen. You can do a transfer, 
can do what the Spirit leads you. Just bless the work of the Lord. Be able to happily give to your God. Let us pray. Father, I pray for all those who are willing to be a blessing to the work of the Lord. I am asking, none of us shall lack. Prosper our seed. Use it to link us up with our helpers of destiny. Father, most importantly, let none of us be found wanting on the last day. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. While we are giving our offerings and rejoicingly, I'm happy to announce to us that the Lord is doing something unique and wherever you are, you can get ready to key into it by the grace of God. God will do it. Ministries has a theological arm called Freedom Theological Seminary. Affiliated, we are affiliated with Redeemer University. September 2020 will be kicking off with Bachelor of Arts in Christian Religious Studies and Diploma Christian Religious Studies. I want you to register and get ready because God is about to bless every one of us educationally, our children and our children's children. Get ready for it. Number two, by the grace of God, come July this year, 2020, somebody says, Pastor, we're talking about coronavirus. Forget about coronavirus. The Lord will fight for us, and he has fought for us. He can be here forever. If God has given us victory. So let's begin to plan for future. We are going to have gospel ministers retreat July 13th, just for four days. I want you to come. It's going to be glorious. I'll talk more about it as we keep going forward. A four-day retreat for all the ministers of God. We shall gather and seek God. Seasoned men of God are joining us from Monday, July 13th down to 16th. We'll be here before the Lord. Those four days shall be first class. I want to see you here. By the grace of God, God will do it ministries. It's located at number 11 Farayola layout behind Bodija Market, Ibadan. We have written some books that will bless you, and I want you to get those books online. You can just key in by saying www.gfoyo.com. www.gfoyo.com. Or you just go to Amazon and purchase the books that will bless your life. Once again, I'm excited you are here today and I'm expecting you next week and on Sunday. Be there with us 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and on Tuesday next week 11 a.m. to 12 noon. God bless you.